Okay, uh, example 7.5, uh, we're asked to determine the real roots of this expression. And we are asked uh, to first use F0, and then to use roots uh, to compare the, the two. Okay, uh, so let's go over to MATLAB and let's do it. Okay, so here I am over in MATLAB, where I've tried to size things up so that I have the equation down here that we need to find the roots of. And I have some blank space over here, uh, so when I plot my uh, function using fplot, I can display it uh, and my command window at the same time. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm first going to need to create uh, my error function of the function I'm trying to find the, the roots of. So I'll go ahead with my function signature, uh, function uh, res is equal to, and maybe let's just call this uh, error func. Uh, and maybe 7.5 uh, because it's example uh, 7.5. Okay. Uh, and then that will have a single uh, input variable uh, x. Okay. So in this case, I just want to find where this expression is equal to 0. Uh, and so my uh, error function is just this expression as written. Okay. So it'll be negative 26 plus 82.3 uh, times x minus 88 x squared plus 45.4 times x cubed minus 9 period times uh, x to the fourth plus 0 0.65 times x period raised to the okay and so I want to make sure this is vectorized because otherwise s0 will come or f plot will complain um, and we can undo some of these and, and see what that complaint looks like okay cool so I have my documentation, so I'll copy and paste uh, the signature. Now let's add a comment. This is my error function uh, to solve uh, for zeros of, uh, I'll just write polynomial in example uh, 7, 5. Okay, let's save it. And by default, MATLAB will suggest using the same name as the function, uh, give it in the signature. Uh, cool. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're asked to use F0. I have no idea where the roots of this equation is. It's a fifth order polynomial, so it can have up to five. So let's use fplot to plot it and get an idea of where those are. Okay. So I'm going to use fplot. Okay. And first argument of fplot will be uh, the function I want to plot. So that'll be this error func uh, 75. And then I need to specify a range. I have no idea where these roots will be. So let me just start with a big range of, say, negative 100 uh, to 100. And so if I plot it, it looks like maybe it crosses uh, once here. Let's just go ahead and make it you know, negative 1,000 to 1,000. Make sure there isn't any funny business that goes on. Uh, and even out there, it looks exactly the same. So let's try and zoom in just a little bit. Okay. Negative 10 to 10. Um, it's looking better. Let's hone in just a little more. Maybe um, negative 8 to 8. Okay. And even here, right, it looks like it's maybe crossing 0 uh, once. So let's try 0 to 8. Okay, yeah, it looks like it's, it's just crossing that one time. And it's somewhere really close to 0. Okay, so my last iteration, because I'm probably driving you crazy now, so I'll just do negative 1 to 1. Okay, and then if I were to turn uh, grid on, Right. It's crossing somewhere around uh, 0.5 here. Okay. 
Okay, so to find the location of that root, we'll try f0 at um, air funk okay, 75. And this is the case where it looks like it just crosses once. Just gonna give an, give an initial guess of 0.5. Okay, and we get 0.5793. Actually, I'm going to assign that to little r so that we can use it for a comparison later on. Okay. Cool. Okay. So one other thing, uh, if we play around, this is an example where it looks like we only have one root. So if I make my initial guess something like 6, right, I get the same answer. If I make it something like negative 6, I get the same answer. Right? It converges on the same answer because it looks like or appears that there's only one real root. Uh, and so that's all F0 is going to find um, or identify. Okay, cool. So I have that value stored here. Uh, and then one last thing, I made a comment when I was making uh, my error function that I want to make sure it's vectorized so that F plot doesn't complain. Uh, and so what I mean by that, uh, not sure what I just clicked there. So if I go back to my f plot call, say negative 10 to 10, okay, it'll give me a little note. Uh, and so basically the note is, you know, the way f plot works is it's going to try and pass a vector of uh, x values to my function, uh, and then expect a vector of um, values to be returned, uh, which just facilitates uh, plotting. So it still plots, uh, but it gives me the warning message that, hey, uh, it'd be better if I vectorized your function. All right. Um, so it's kind of a just a warning, right? It still works, and even with my unvectorized code, uh, F0 works, and F0 doesn't complain. It's just F plot that complains. Okay, and so that's kind of in line with uh, the suggestion of always trying to uh, vectorize your functions. Okay, so now if we use roots for comparison, so what we need for roots is a polynomial of our uh, characteristic equation or polynomial of the prefactors of our x terms. Okay, and so um, I have a fifth order polynomial, and so I need to uh, create a vector of my prefactors going from my highest power uh, to my zeroth power. Okay, and when I write this polynomial, I need to include every single term. Okay, and what I mean by that is this is this fifth order polynomial, I need prefactor front of x5, x to the fourth, x to the third, x to the uh, two, x squared, uh, x, and uh, x zero, which is just uh, nothing. Okay, and so if I was missing, uh, say, a term x squared, um, that would correspond to having a prefactor of, of zero. Okay, so let's uh, create this vector of prefactors. I'll use bracket notation, and I'm going to go from uh, highest power all the way down to uh, zeroth power. Okay. So that'll be 0 0.65, uh, negative 9, uh, 45.4, negative 88, 82.3, and negative 26. Okay. And then the command just works as okay, roots. And it has a single argument, which is my vector, which contains all of my prefactors. Okay, so roots has a single argument, which is my vector of prefactors. Uh, and then uh, roots will return all of the roots uh, of that polynomial. Uh, and it'll return all the roots in the form of a vector. So I'm going to store that to big R uh, to correspond to my vector of roots. Okay, so if I run it, um, I find that I get just one real root. And that one real root is at 0.5793, uh, which is exactly what we found uh, before um, using F0. Okay, so the results agree perfectly. Um, this one arguably is probably uh, much simpler. Okay. Um, and here I did everything in the command window. Uh, remember, you can set up a script uh, to do everything within a script, or you could even create a, a function um, to do exactly the same thing.